Hello, hello. I've arrived. There we go. Anyway, yes. Hello, hello. Hold on. All right, let me try that again. Hello, hello. I've arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello, hello. Thoroughly exceptional volume of hellos today, but such is the way of things sometimes. But yes, so tonight, unfortunately, the collab was not, uh, not no collab, basically. <laughs> so that being said, we're going to play some Ark Knights. Yeah, I was originally planning on playing Ark Knights yesterday, but I wanted to do some other things. So I decided to set that to the side for the minute. And it is what it is. But yes, unfortunately, I do have other pursuits outside of just this, so. Let's see. Not a whole lot to be said, I don't think. Of course, there's no other business to be gone over. All that there is to do is to do the stream. So, let's see. Next week, let's see. Next week, uh, we might not be doing the collab on the usual day. We will see when exactly it happens, but it won't be on the usual day, most likely. But yes, as for the rest of the days, I suppose it will matter. It will depend a little bit on, you know, when the collab falls. That might displace something, but assuming nothing else changes, the usual streams will be on, on Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, with Ark Nights, most likely. But yes, Friday, 9 p.m. Central Time, with something, certainly. And then, probably again, next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Saturday's a pretty, pretty good day for me if I want to do a third stream. So, again, a third stream is not guaranteed, but it is something that I'm kind of aiming for. So yes, I think that should more or less cover us. Got through that pretty smoothly today. But yes, so, resuming Ark Knights, we are resuming the Gaviel event. <laughs> Gaviel the Great Chief Returns, that's what it's called. But yes, so last time we sort of drew near to, uh, drew near to Eunecthes. And now we are about to confront her, I imagine. So... Let us waste no more time and get to video games. But yes. A little bit nervous about this one, considering how much the Rathalos mission back way back when caused us some trouble. But we have learned much and we have grown strong. We are numerically worse, significantly so, this time around, but... Intellectually, we are far more powerful, more flexible with our tactics and all of that. And I don't believe... Actually, did we do the, the pre-mission cutscene? I guess it doesn't matter. We'll be doing it one way or the other. So, I suppose, let us waste no more time in this either. Operation RI-8, Gaviel's Fist, The Mightiest Clash. All right. Again, there's not really any, not really any, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's nothing I can really do to, like, well, I was going to say there's nothing I can do to revise my strategy before we get started, but I will say, I don't think we need Vigna and Plume on our squad currently. We can probably switch back to more standard, or at least more standard for me, Vanguards. But yes, they have served their purpose on the mission that I use them for. We might go back and try to get a better rating on that mission, but I've said that about a lot of missions and we've not done it a lot so far, so. Yeah, one thing I am considering is we've used Myrtle a fair amount. We've not used Healing Wings. And granted, that's because it's, I don't think it's quite as efficient in terms of DP per second effectively. But yeah, you know, it has a greater, it gives more DP, but it gives that DP over a longer period of time. It has a slightly longer recharge. The healing could be useful, 
it would allow me to place a unit in front of Myrtle and not have to worry about a medic quite as early on. It's a little bit of a gamble, I think. I don't know that it's that necessary. It's something to think about, at the very least. There have definitely been missions that we've done where I feel like I could have liked healing wings, but I think we're gonna swift st stick with support beta for now. There's a mission? I wanna go! There is, in fact, a mission. But yes. So, other than that, we've got a good selection of guards who have served us quite well. Also, I noticed, also completely unrelated, but the, uh, the type of guard that Utage is has changed its name, is now known as the Solo Blade. I don't know if there's anything else relevant about that, and I feel like I might have pointed that out before, but I realized it recently, and it struck me as a little bit of an odd change. They used to be known as uh, Musha Guards. I'm not quite sure the reason for the, the switch. But I suppose most solo blades do, in fact, use a singular blade, so... That's something? But yes, anyway, Utage, I don't think... Uh, we would have any reason to change her out right now. The rest of our units, except Vigna, who can almost certainly be changed. What do we have? We've got... Yeah, we've got the usual medics. Anesthesia, Myrtle. Yeah, Utage, Estelle. We've got a good spread. We could maybe use another guard. But yes, I'm not quite sure who I would want for a guard specifically. Hmm. You know what? Here's a, here's a choice. Here's an option. Yes. Melantha, I've heard, is quite good. She punches well above her three-star weight, generally speaking. Yeah, she might... I mean, she'd probably be better if she was leveled up a little bit more, but she's one of the higher-level units that I have on the team currently, so... If anyone's going to be slowing us down, it's probably not going to be her. Sit. Of course, that being said, all of our units are at least promoted. Ah, hello, Asuma. Good to see you. Yeah, all of our units are at least promoted, so we're not going to struggle as much as we could have. Maybe not going to struggle as much as we have throughout some of these missions. But we'll see how far we can get with relatively low level levels. Far below the recommendation at the very least. Buildings here are so different from the other tribes. Terrible houses. Hmm? The architecture and decor is all pretty crude. Got a lot of weird broken gizmos all over the place, too. Oh yeah, I think I mentioned... I mentioned last time that I had thought this artwork came from a skin that was released before this event. And all that. Went into it a, a little bit. Uh, that's actually incorrect. It was released at the time of this event. Just sort of is a little bit different from the other sort of art assets used for, or rather the alternate costume assets used for a few of our operators. Anyway. Zoo Mama, you've got a very unique tribe here. Looks like they enjoy fiddling around with machines just as much as you do. This is my people's masterpiece. Yes, they now know the charm of the machines, and they've built the tribe you see here on their passion alone. Look, it's Gaviel! The great chief wasn't lying. She's planning to duel Gaviel again with the big ugly. What? No way, I can't miss that. Wow, there's so many people. Many of them are from other tribes who've come here after the ceremony. They will be joining us. So, what did you want to say? Gabiel, if you just left without a fuss, I wouldn't have cared. But since you're standing before me once again, I will defeat you here and now. Why? Because you're too strong, Gabiel. You still remember that day? That day? Before that day, I was just like you. I believed the strength in my fist was everything. Ha! 
Ah! Gaviel wins! Haha, <laughs> I win again. Hmm, another rematch. I'll definitely win this time. Sure. Huh? Why is the ground shaking? Look over there. What's that? A very neat art asset is what it is. It's a big hunk of metal. That is a Sargon nomadic city. What's a Sargon? Sargon is our country. Then what's a nomadic city? A nomadic city is a very large tribe with many people living in it. I visited one once when I was young. Don't be afraid. It won't come over here. It will never have anything to do with us. Do Mama, what is it? Are you feeling sick? No, I'm going home. Uh, I remember. A Sargon nomadic city was passing pretty close by to us that day. He turned all weird after that. I think you're the weird one, Gaviel. How could you not feel astonished after seeing something like that? How could you not be shocked? How could you not feel like a tiny speck of dust? I mean, I guess I felt something like, wow, that's big, but what's a big thing got to do with me? That's our Gaviel. But that's the day I lost interest in fighting with you. I asked Enam to help me find books on machinery, and st began studying Sargonian and mechanical engineering. Then, I met the High Priest, and we began building the big, ugly thing together. I know, I did go look for you, after all. Hmm, does that mean that weirdo over there is your invisible friend? That's right! Whoa, when did he get here? This fellow's got the same energy as my boss, the Emperor. Emperor, are you talking about that penguin? Sure am. Hold on a minute. You know the boss? Of course I... of course I do, though it's been a couple of decades since we last met. Uh, was it a few decades? Or a few centuries? Uh, doesn't matter, I can smell them on you. What's that about a few centuries? Lordy Lou, who'd have thunk I'd meet a friend of the boss out here? Oh, you really do exist. I always thought Zumama got messed up in the head and hallucinated you. I was even researching similar cases at Rhodes Island. Oh, don't you know, Gaviel? Whenever you came to look for Zumama, I was always there watching. Just like this. It seems he is indeed invisible. He disappeared. Ha ha ha. I wouldn't normally show myself to you, but since I want to pilot the Big Ugly, I have no choice. Building machines with the little ones is actually a lot of fun. Speaking of the big ugly, shouldn't someone be driving it? Because I'm pretty sure it's about to crash into that house. Uh, um, uh, oh, uh, gotta go. Wow, he popped back into that thing pretty quick. Cool. He and the boss really are birds of a feather, huh? Oh, right, our conversation, Zoomama. Let's get to the point. We're gonna fight anyway. Do we really have to talk about all this stuff? Yes. Very dedicated she is. I have things to say to you, and to myself. Did you know, Gaviel? You were always my biggest obstacle. Huh? Really? Well, not just you, but people like you. I've tried so many times to teach people about the charm of the machines. But in the end, they're never interested. Because they look up to the strong people, like you. You teach them that in this place you get what you want when you're here strong. It's your strength that stands in the way of progress. So, I decided to change the way they think. I'm going to use an even power to dis an even greater power to destroy this blind worship of strength that you created. Well, that makes sense to me. What do you think, Doctor? Machines are cool. Yeah, <laughs> that big clanker is sweet. Honestly, I'm almost convinced myself. 
but I never wanted to be anyone's role model. When I say fists solve problems, that's just me talking. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. I know. I'm not blaming you. Even so, Gabiel, I want you to defeat you. I want to defeat you, the power of the Big Ugly. Everyone, listen up. The Big Ugly will be dueling Gabiel once again. This battle will decide who is the real great chief. High Priest, it's time to fight. You got it. Are you ready, Gabiel? Your friends can join the fight, too. Finally. Step back, everybody. This one's mine. Come at me. Let's test its performance first. Fire! <laughs> Don't think you'll hit me a second time. Ah, uh, those are the reflexes I'd expect from Gabriel. No problem. Have a taste of my great iron fist. A test of strength, huh? Sounds good to me. Wow, Gabriel's strong. Crazy strong. She stopped its fist all by lonesome. I know I asked way back when I got my first physical, but why is she a medic again? You may be my opponent, but I can't help but cheer for you. It's not over yet, though. The Big Ugly has a max performance mode for just such an occasion. Go! What? That big guy looks stronger. And it's suppressing Gaffiel's strength? Oh, what a melodious sound. Hmm? These readings are strange. What? High Priest, what's going on? What? My butt's being cooked. I'm talking about the Big Ugly. Oh, I was just uh, sharing my status as well. I think the engine output is too high. I'm losing control of the Big Ugly. It's actually quite exhilarating. Get out of there. Aren't we fighting? Let's just fight like this. Come, Gabriel, I'll finish this once and for all. Well? It doesn't look like we're fighting like that. High Priest! Oh, fine. What a shame. Looks like I'll have to change tactics. Zoomama, don't worry about me. I'll do my best to stabilize it. You find a way to stop the Big Ugly in the meantime. <sighs> Gabriel, you and your people get out of here. This isn't your business. What are you talking about? Don't you want to beat me? I do, but not like this. Come on, of course I'm going to help, right, Doctor? Fight the monster. I'll help. Utage, croissant, prepare for battle. Eh, you want me to fight that big guy? Really? <sighs> what a pain. I'm getting overtime for this one, boss. Triple rate. Well, we must do what we must do. And what we must do is carefully consider the field of battle. That's it. So yes. So, we've got a lot of mushroom tiles. We've got not a whole lot of... Ah, hello, Pick. Good to see you as always. I hope you're doing well this evening. But yes, so tunnel, tunnel entry. But yes, so enemies can enter here, but they won't be... Presumably they won't be... Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, so we've got a lot of mushroom tiles. We don't have a lot of ranged tiles. I suppose we might as well start out with Myrtle, as per usual. Maybe don't want to put her all the way back, but... You know what? I will put her all the way back. Why not? Why not? Nothing of note so far. Oh, almost does that. Of course, we're only a few seconds into the mission, but... I do hope we'll get to fight the Big Ugly. Alright, well... Hmm. Now we need to think Understood. a little bit. Because I do want Myrtle's deployment points, but I don't want to, you know, lose the blocking she has. Um, probably we're going to want some healing sooner rather than later, and I think Perfumer's going to be just fine for that purpose. And of course we're going to want some range tiles soon as well. 
So yeah, so we've got Impalers coming from the south. We've got regular Warriors coming from the north. But yeah, I don't know that we have any decisions that are significantly better than any others at this point. If we're going to have regular Warriors, it might actually be good to, say, deploy Estelle. At the very least, we need to deploy someone, otherwise enemies are going to continue to be a problem. I don't... again, I don't think that... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that... Well, okay. Whatever I'm thinking, I need to think faster and, uh, and or better, because, yeah, things are going to start getting to be a problem if we let them. So yes, Myrtle is now defending, which is not ideal, but it's not terrible either. Yeah, Astesia has enough attack that she can deal with enemies on the way up, I think. Melantha doesn't have a whole lot of reliance on defense. She has even less defense than our other Dreadnoughts that we've seen. I'm probably waiting too long to start deploying our units. Um, not a great place to put Kea Bay, I don't think, around here. Oh dear. Okay, Melantha's not doing as good as I thought. Okay. So, Estelle being able to kill things faster is very good, and I imagine we're going to get a lot of value out of that. Hmm. Tomimi is... again, we're not really in a position where Tomimi is great, but we're in a position where she is applicable, at the very least. Yes, Astesia... Hmm. How do we want to deal with these shamans? I feel like we'd probably want to be able to hit them from hit them more from range. Of course, we do have to deal with the fact that they can hit us from range and quite hard. Um. Okay, Astesia is not going to survive this. Um. Not unless we change tactics quite a lot. Oh dear. Hmm. Well, this is fine. <laughs> it's not fine, but we're going to make it work. Okay, so we've lost Tamimi, which is more or less what I expected, and things are rapidly devolving. Alright, so. Oh dear, we... Who did we lose so quickly? Uh, probably... actually, yeah, okay. So it was, uh... Hmm. Hmm. I don't like anything that's going on here. Oh, oh dear. Oh, there's the big ugly thing. I didn't even notice it was here. Hmm. So it looks like only some enemies are going into the south. Hmm. But yes, there's a lot that we could have done there. Oh wait, hold on, that's not the big ugly. What am I talking about? Oh no, that is. What am I... Got a little bit confused there. I was thinking, oh, that's not the big ugly. That's just one of the guys with the saws. But no, uh, those weren't around. So yes, big ugly thing. First form, okay. So this one's going to be challenging too. So, first form. Ranged attacks deal splash damage, melee attacks deal more damage. Periodically destroys mush giant mushrooms and stumps, rendering them unable to be deployed upon. When HP drops to zero, it will explode, stunning target units in a large area and ejecting its pilot, the High Priest. So, Will not attack, cannot be blocked, and takes true damage every second. So, at a certain point, it will cease to be a thing, but it will still kind of be a thing by way of the fact that it can be, you know, a problem for us. Um, hmm. But yes, the Braves are definitely a unit that's been an issue for me, and are a unit that I think is going to continue to be an issue for me. I think probably, probably the Braves are going to be best dealt with, as I had said earlier, by a Duelist Defender. 
that's it. And of the Duelist Defenders, there's only one that I'm aware that I have. I might have more of them, but there's only one that I know of offhand. But yes, the Ritualists were a problem before. So we'll definitely need some way to deal with them. Ideally, some way to deal with them at range. Um, so yeah, I think deploying in a similar situation to where we were is probably fine. Maybe something like deploying with Jessica facing down here to give us a little bit more coverage on enemies before they start to become a problem. Um, Tomimi... Whoop, lost sight of where my mouse was. But yes, Tomimi up here could be good if we want to use Tomimi. But yes. I didn't see where the big ugly was going because I wasn't, I wasn't paying enough attention to even know it was there. So... At least not until it was too late. But it wasn't the big ugly that defeated us. Not strictly speaking, anyway. I suppose we'll continue practicing. It doesn't really matter one way or the other, considering the low cost of failing a mission, but... So. I do feel like Korra is still good, what with her very high defense. Yeah, and, well, no. That's the thing. Because we're facing a lot of enemies that have pretty high damage output. So I think that, yeah, I do think that being able to kill them faster is probably the the strat. So, Korra might not be ideal. So I think we'll switch out Korra for a duelist. Our most specialist little duelist. Cement. All right, so just by promoting Cement, she won't get any more stats, but she will get a higher cost. I don't know that Stratum Groundbreaker... Well, no, Stratum Groundbreaker is probably going to be good. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't think that the stump destroying happens when a unit is uh, on the stump. At least I didn't see it happen before when a unit was on the stump. But yeah, it's not like uh, it's not like the black ice, which just deletes a unit. But yeah, cement will be okay. I might play around with the with upgrading more units if this takes a while. But ideally, I in theory I should be doing that anyway. But you know, you can forgive me a bit of stubbornness, can't you? Anyway, so, the mission begins. So yes, having seen what we've seen, the abundance of point. deployment points that we had and the surfeit of healing, this might have actually been a good opportunity to make use of uh, healing wings, but didn't think of it in time. Um... So yes, Jessica will be where she will be when she will be there. But yes, we might not need Melantha. Though I do, yeah, I'd want to place... I feel like I want to place Cement fairly high up. This might not have been the best idea, but it was it's certainly an idea. I want a little bit more healing coverage, so I'm going to place Perfumer like so. I've gotten a bit distracted on my, you know, deploy Jessica plan, but you know. Boring? I find it quite thrilling. Oh, I should have said riveting, actually. That's another construction related task. But yes, Jessica will be okay. Fine, maybe stretching it, but she'll be okay. I'll wait a little bit to activate Stratum Groundbreaker so I can maximize its effectiveness. Jessica's doing good. I think we maybe... No, I was going to say we could maybe use the 
like take out a little bit of space here. We're going to deploy to. Uh, I was gonna say we're gonna deploy to Mimi. I realize now, with the way cement is deployed, this is not ideal. Which is, you know, it is what it is. But we'll live. We've survived worse. Um. I mean, we will do okay. She'll suffer a little bit once we get things kind of turned around, but or turned around once she activates her skill, um, and she can no longer consistently target enemies very well. But Cement is uh, doing really good, though. Actually, okay, yeah, Tamimi is utterly incapable of assisting us at this point. The ritualists are coming in, and they need to be killed. So, how are we going to swing that? I feel like, honestly, Utage could be a good choice. At the very least, Utage is pretty killy. So, she might be able to do this pretty well. I guess she didn't need to be where she specifically is. She might have been better served by being somewhere else. Yes, I do want to place a unit behind Cement because she can only block so much. Alright, there's the big ugly thing. And there's the Brave. And the Brave is really what I wanted... Well, no, this is fine. Um... So yeah, so, Cement is going to be occupied for a while, and I think, I think we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, Cement is struggling a little bit, but she's not doing too bad. Anyway, what I was going to suggest is, did I, well, alright, so, I could have thought that a little bit better. Thought that through a little bit better. Um, Cement is going to survive if I have anything to say about it. Utage is present. Um, okay, the Brave is just about gone, but also. Okay, the Brave is gone, we're fine. Okay. So, hmm, I was going to say, Jessica hasn't been eaten yet, but uh, unfortunately that is not something that was true for very long. Okay, so the big ugly thing is strong. We've got another Brave coming, and I don't like that. Especially since there's no one else who can effectively defend against the Braves. Um, we're going to need more damage, I think. So this puts us in a tricky situation, because the big ugly thing is very strong. Oh, and it can instantly kill our operators, it seems like, um, if what just happened to Gabriel is any indication. Hmm. So, we might need to reverse the strategy that we had with the Brave previously. Yeah, KMB is going down, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? Um, hmm. Alright, we need to take some heat off of Perfumer. Ah, we've deployed... It occurs to me that we've deployed uh, Cement in a very bad location. Um, I guess DP is good. Um... Who do, actually, oh, we had, uh, right. I was going to say, who did we have there that we lost? But yeah, it was, uh, oh dear, this is not going to be good for Myrtle. Um, I guess the Brave is going elsewhere, so this could be worse, uh, for me at least. Myrtle is going down, which is about what I expected there. Astesia, I don't think, can take out the Brave in a reasonable amount of time. But, Utage can take a nap. She can definitely do that. So now we've got a couple units who can't be healed, and a healer who can heal units who can't be healed normally. So that's an interesting situation that we're in. We're probably going to want to just remove Utage. Um, 
Just show up at completion. Hmm. I don't like anything that's happening here. Um, and I should have been a little bit more proactive there, but what can you do? All right, Melantha, show us your true form, your unlimited skills. Um, if you want treatment, you gotta come closer. This might actually work. Um, probably not, but you know it could. Uh, so. The big ugly thing continues to be a big ugly problem. I don't think Gaviel, yes, Gaviel can't heal Croissant, so we placed her in very much the wrong location. Um, okay, Estelle, please, um, no. So the big ugly thing is in fact also a big strong thing. And we're kind of out of options here. Granted, we are going to win because uh, it's only one unit. This certainly doesn't feel like a win, but it is one, so. Alright, Utage, it is time for your epic yes. duel. I don't... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not under any... Not under any uh, illusions that we can actually defeat this thing, but we can try, at least. Mission accomplished. Good job. If I put in more effort, maybe the outcome could be better? Alright. I'm not going to accept that, though. Not that it, you know, happened anyway, but... So... Now we need to think things through. So on that bottom route, we're seeing a lot of ranged units. The Ritualists are a big problem. The Ritualists are a big problem and one that we want to deal with quickly. The big ugly thing is not something that we can deal with with any one unit, I don't think. But yeah, we need much, 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 much stronger units if we wanted to deal with the big ugly thing just in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Because yeah, even our mightiest hero, Cement, did not stand up to it very long. She could have, perhaps, more if she was higher level and had her second skill. It's an interesting situation. Most of the other things weren't actually that big of a deal. Dealing with the Ritualists or such a little bit earlier probably could have helped. Because, yeah, one thing is I was sort of defaulting back to the kill box strategy, and I definitely think that was a bit of a misplay here. I think Myrtle was in a fine position, but we could have done a little bit better. So I think probably spreading our forces a little bit, concentrating some of the, the melee enemies up here, and the ranged enemies down here would be better. So yes, for the ranged enemies, we need to be able to deal with them quickly and effectively. So having a, an effective sniper is good. Jessica being the sniper that's on our team is the option that we have right now. We could, of course, always switch her out. We could, of course, always level her up. We could, of course, always switch out her skill to give her more damage when it counts. It's got a decent duration on it, and the dodge gives her a decent resistance to the Ritualists. But yes, Keobe. Probably really hot knives would be good for dealing with the big ugly thing, or at least with helping deal with it. Tamimi, I'm still not really seeing the use case for at this point. Of course, she is our worst and weakest uh, caster that we have on the team. So I guess Kaebe is not that much better, if at all better. I think maybe she just has better suit, like skills that are slightly better suited. And yeah, I do believe 
The enemies don't have such high defense that Tamimi's skill being active and the fact that she does physical damage is, like... Yeah, the fact that she does physical damage when her skill is active doesn't, like, break her as a unit. But we're definitely not... I'm definitely not. You don't have anything to do with this. You are blameless in all of this. Um, but yeah, I'm not positioning her in such a way that we're able to effectively make use of her skills or rather make use of her different range when her skill is active. But yeah, Cement did a good job. She did what she was instructed to do. She didn't do as well as she could have, but I think a lot of that was just coming down to the fact that we did, as I said, use the kill box strategy, which resulted in me having a lot more units in inappropriate places than I would like. Where we position Cement is going to be very important to dealing with the rich or the Braves, and she's also going to be instrumental in dealing with the Big Ugly thing, given that she has very high defense and very high health. Her defense, actually, let's... Her health isn't that much higher than Croissant. 431 for defense versus... Uh, I guess she she's not that much stronger. She's not that much stronger, actually. The fact that she only blocks one unit is a boon for her in this case, though, because it will mean that she's not taking as much damage from blocking as many units. Croissant is interesting. The knockback on her skill could be good if we used it. Um, hmm. The stun's nice. Um, Melantha is kind of here. She's just kind of there. Um, I mostly just put her on for the sake of having another guard, but maybe another guard isn't what we need right now. At the very least, maybe another guard who is just uh, has the range that she has is not what we need right now. So yeah, more ranged guards or more snipers, I think, are going to be very helpful for us. And on the upper level, it would probably be good to have a slower, actually. So that might be something to try. I don't use D-cell binders very much, if at all. But I'm willing to give it a shot. The Earth Spirit's Earth Spirit's got a, a nice dub. I don't know if I've mentioned Earth Spirit's dub before, but I like it. I like it. I like her her accent. Um, as for the rest of these, like I said, we're generating DP at a pretty decent rate. I was kind of, yeah, I was not using Myrtle a whole lot there. I was intentionally like delaying using her skill in some points because you know we had so many uh, had so many DP. I felt like we'd waste some if we used it. Of course, we could just get Myrtle off the field sooner. Utage did okay. She did good against the Ritualist. Um, she... Her fun final confrontation against the, the big ugly thing was, was interesting. I don't think it's necessarily good, but Utage would actually probably be an asset if placed like in front of Cement, because her ability to take a nap allows her to pass units off to Cement, essentially, when we need to. And yeah, as long as we have Perfumer on the field, the fact that Utage can't be healed normally isn't that big of a deal. But yes, I'm not as convinced on Cement as I was before because I'm realizing now that she doesn't really have that high of defense compared to Croissant. But yeah, she's not promoted, but of course, just being promoted doesn't give you additional stats like I had thought it had for a, a very long period of time. But yes. Cement could be a lot stronger, and perhaps it's a bit foolhardy of me to essentially hinge the entire strategy of the mission on a unit who is like 60 level below the recommended level. Probably 70, actually. But yes. 
The Rathalos was won. The fight with the Rathalos was won, but it was only after a great, great, great deal of sacrifice and me staying up entirely too late for my taste. I'd rather not repeat that. So if we still aren't able to defeat the Big Ugly after some more consideration, I'm probably going to... I'm probably going to, you know, play the game as intended and level up my units a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to go so far as to Elite 2 anyone, but leveling up units would probably not go amiss. Probably not that big of a deal, but it makes the map a little bit, a little bit more in our favor. And getting, getting enemies killed within a certain amount of time is really where a lot of this boils down. What this, what a lot of this boils down to, I should say. That is something I've been realizing more and more. You know, a single level doesn't matter too much, and really even a lot of levels doesn't matter that much necessarily. But it is, you know, the increase of stats reaching certain breakpoints with your attacks. You know, that you're defeating enemies in one fewer attack, two fewer attacks, so on and so forth. That's where things really start to matter. So. Anyway. We did do pretty good. We did do pretty good, even with our pretty weak team. So I'm honestly not that, like... I'm not necessarily bothered by the idea of making our team stronger and just winning. We do have other options for that if I do want to take out strong, take in, yeah, if I want to avoid having too, too many strong units, because we do have a lot of other units that are already quite strong. Rosk would be very good for delaying. Pachanka would be good for dealing additional damage at range so on and so forth. Basically, Team Rainbow. <laughs> Team Rainbow are the units to use if we want anything to be really just dead. It's a fun little, fun little thought. Extra dimensional, mu hired muscle, effectively, but anyway. We go again. So yes, There's given what we've learned, now. Ideally, we're not going to be put into a position where we're Let's going to need Myrtle to block anything. So, like, let's not. <laughs> um, let's not, and let's very much try not to. But yes. Um, I kind of hoped that we'd be getting this dealt with sooner, but oh well. This... Could have been better, but it's not that bad. Um, did we? Yes, yeah, so we switched out Melantha, right? Um, so we're not going to get our DP quite the way I would like, and we're going to get a little bit more damage on Myrtle than I would like, which is to say any damage whatsoever. Um, so yes, so we're going to want some. We're going to want to think about this a lot. Myrtle is going to have some trouble here, but she is going to take out that enemy. And so she's not going to have much trouble taking out the next one. Okay, so up top, we're dealing with a lot of enemies who are. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's think about this some more. We definitely had a higher volume of enemies coming from the top lane, so it's probably good to do things like this. Um. I don't like what's happening here. We've I kind of uh eh. here we are. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of anything that's going on Ready? here. Um <laughs> I kind of didn't really think of things that uh didn't think things through that well to be honest. That was kind of unnecessary, I think. Um cuz yeah, the extra damage from Earth Spirit would have been appreciated. Probably I should have used her other skill. Um, for humor, we want. I won't be afraid. I'm glad you're not afraid. We're on you At least one of us isn't. Is Very good. Um. Yes, we've had a brave spawn. 
it's going to be, it's important to, that I figure out what route the Braves take, because I don't actually know. Um, if you want treatment, you gotta come closer. The Ritualist is a problem, but not an unsolvable one. Alright, so, I don't like what's going on here, um, and we did, I did sort of go against my planned strategy. Oh dear, I wasn't paying attention, and now we've, hold on, is, no, Perfumer should have been able to heal, well, okay. Uh, oh well. Mm. So we've got two of these fellows coming, um... Which is a problem. Don't get yourself killed, dummy. All right. So this strategy has uh, is uh, substantially worse. It feels good. like, and I'm doing much poorer. So that is what it is, I suppose. So yes. So Earth Spirit did some work, but not like a lot of it. Um, hmm. It's too bad we didn't Unfortunate. Win, but I won't let it discourage me. Neither shall I. So it seems that maybe the kill box strategy isn't that bad. <laughs> But I think the real thing is just that I needed to be a little bit more mindful. Probably deploying Gaviel somewhere like this, facing thusly, would have been better. Because, yeah, I think overlapping medic coverage is going to be something that's going to be very valuable for us. Because, yeah, we're, we are taking a lot of damage a lot of times. But, yeah. It's not that important that all of the damage, or, I don't know. We positioned ourselves very aggressively there, and I don't think that helped us much. I think that harmed us more than anything. So we're going to try this again with different positioning. But yeah, my thought in always putting Myrtle very far back is that she ideally shouldn't be blocking anything at all. And maybe that's true, but we do kind of need to win the mission, so uh, I don't know. There's other considerations, in short. I think Estelle is a good first choice. Because Estelle can be quite good. We definitely didn't put her in a position to shine like the star that she is, but... So... Now we need to start thinking about what we want to do for the ranged units. The enemy is down there, because yeah, that's not yeah, that's not a tile I can deploy on, that grassy tile. I thought that might be a bush for a second, but no. <clears throat> Sit. But yes. So the southern mushroom tiles. Or rather, anyway, the mushroom tiles in general will provide me with defense, but we're going to be. I don't think we can really justify placing basically any units outside of uh, healer range. Maybe if we had an ambusher, like, say, uh, Manticore on side. Manticore might not be the ideal, but she could be fine. Having a D-cell binder in the top row just outside of medic range wouldn't be too terrible, I don't think. And I think we could make this work. So yeah, two spaces up wouldn't really overlap our medic range very much, though. Yeah, um... Estelle probably doesn't need that much healing, to be fair. Let's... 
Utage it up a little bit, because Utage can't be directly healed, so we don't need to worry about her getting directly healed or not getting directly healed. We can swap her out before too long. That probably wasn't the best place to put her, considering where I'm planning on putting Jessica, but you know. If you want treatment, you gotta come close. I won't let you know so yeah, DP does matter now. We are having some issues with it. So freeze. There's the enemies. So yeah, defeating the brawlers, or at least putting a little bit more hurt on them is good. I'll show them what I can do. Jessica is doing pretty okay. Come on, get it together. We now have a brave in position. It might actually be... It might honestly be good to use Utage against them. I don't know that she can really stand up to them, but she can at least try, and it's worth a shot. Not one step backward. Of course, we are... Hmm. Jessica being in range of more than one ritualist at the time is probably going to be the death of her, if you want but maybe you not. No, she held out fine, so I guess we don't need to worry that much. But yes, Estelle... I'm worried about, but I'm not worried worried about. Um... Thank you for the friendly reminder. The bottom lane's actually being held pretty well, to be honest. Uh, it's being held better than I expected. Um, did I... where have I put the temp worker? Not there. I don't want him there. Um, considering that Jessica is not taking range damage, it could also be good... Yeah, I don't know. We're definitely... We're definitely... Yeah, things are very different from what I expected. We're getting very different results from what I expected. I definitely should have switched out Earth Spirit skill because it is not useful right now. But yeah, Cement being so integral to our strategy and being in such a suboptimal position is definitely not great. Okay, okay. So we are getting... Yeah, we... The big ugly thing isn't destroying our operators when... Okay, well... Okay. I was going to say, it isn't destroying our operators. What I meant to say is that it's not destroying the tiles with operators on them. But I guess that's, uh... Not necessarily so true anymore. Um... These fellows need to be eliminated. Um... I suppose we'll start the epic confrontation now. If you want treatment, you gotta come closer. Yeah, not anywhere near the survivability that we were hoping for, but, you know, it is what it is. But yes, Estelle is not going to hold up long under the gaze of the big ugly thing. Oh dear, what, what had happened? Oh, the ritualist happened. Um. Hmm. I suppose we might as well just kind of go nuts. Um, we don't want to lose our medic. Hmm. So everything did kind of fall apart. Ebe is doing work, though. She's doing work and she's, like, surviving it, so... Not for that long, but I got a pretty good idea of what we were, what, you know, this was good. What happened there was pretty good. We are going to lose, so it's not that good, but. Oh, shucks. First I lost the fight, and now my wallet. Unfortunate. So, we need to think some more. They did very good. Of course, her ability to deal damage to enemies based on their defense is very strong, especially considering that we have a lot of enemies that are getting defense boosts, 
and we have a lot of enemies that have a lot of defense and all of that. So her being able to bypass defense while also punishing defense is good. Because what's the... It's got decent resistance, but it's left got lower resistance and it does defense. Which doesn't necessarily mean all that much, but it's something. Um... Yeah, Kebe was doing very appreciable damage to the big ugly thing. Jessica did very well. Like, she did, like, surprisingly well. But yes, I think we could probably hold that side better if we had a slightly more apt sniper, but I don't know who that would be necessarily. Myrtle did fine. Uh, no issues with her. I think Healing Wings is probably going to be good. So we're going to switch over to that. There's a mission? I wanna go. So yes, Healing Wings could be good to give a little bit more healing to a unit who needs it. I'm increasingly tempted to promote Cement so we have access to uh, her other skill, not Stratum Groundbreaker, that's the one she has. But yes, I'm increasingly inclined to promote Cement. But I'm going to hold off for now still. Kebe, again, did work. And it might do it might do us well to actually increase her skills, now that I think about it. That's another thing we've kind of neglected. But yes. So how else could we have gone about this better? Um, croissant? could have helped us in some way, probably in, yeah, getting, yeah, stunning and displacing enemies. Yeah, the big thing is the Braves, who I want gone. The Braves don't die quickly, and I don't think there's any way that we can make them die quickly, necessarily. There are options, and one of them being, uh... Potentially using, say, uh, Kirin Yato. But I want to try with Utage for the time being. <clears throat> I want to try with Utage for the time being. Utage definitely doesn't have what it takes to stand up to the big ugly thing, but she maybe hasn't what it takes to stand up to a brave. They are weaker in basically every respect. I should hope, anyway. The, br the big ugly thing being the boss. The big ugly thing doesn't do that much damage at range, so as long as we have, you know, ranged units in a place where we can heal them, it's probably not going to eat us. Of course, we need to be very careful with how we position our ranged units if we want to use it, but or if we want to attempt to deal with it better or deal more damage to it at range. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah. It doesn't instantly kill anyone, but it does do enough damage that we simply cannot abide it attacking anyone who's outside of healing range. That just will not fly. But yes, I'm not quite sure what to do with Jessica and her skills. I was thinking smokescreen, but we get the enemies consistently enough that I'm not really sure that we would want that. Because, yeah, they the Ritualists do die before they get out of her range, but I don't know that they get... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, It's worth trying, I guess. We might as well get some more... get some more uh, data. Just give your orders and I'll carry them out. But yes, we can also get arch damage in the form of Utage, but I'm pretty sure we don't want to do that because she definitely doesn't have a whole lot of, uh... Her redeployment time is not short enough to really want that. 13 seconds, um... Because yeah, I don't know, she doesn't have like a short redeploy time though is the thing. Um, not like Kirin R. Yato. Who well, again can do arch damage. Um, I 
I don't just want to throw, you know, I've talked about this before. I don't just want to throw high rarity or high level units at problems to make them go away. But again, I can't argue with the fact that I am, again, about 70 levels or more under the recommended level for most of my units. There comes a point where, again, I have to decide between honor and, uh, you know, getting this done at some point in my lifetime, because we've got a lot to do. There are many events, many chapters, and it's not like we can't have a challenge even if we have units up to snuff. So, yeah, again, I'm still not sure what to do with Tomimi. AoE, stuns, um... Extra damage. Tomini is, like, good, but I don't know that she's that good. I don't know. I don't think that we're really getting a lot of value out of Tomimi. We're not using her, I guess, is part of the issue, but... Earth Spirit. I don't know if we're... I don't know. Because we're slowing enemies, that's good. But we're not putting damage on enemies while we're slowing them, at least not as much as we could be. Not as much as we would be if we were using a different uh, D-Cell binder, I think. Granted, we don't have, like, many good ones. We have Glaucus, but she's specialized in dealing with drones, which, hold on. This sounds like a, a bit of a stretch, but maybe it's a drone. It's a Machina, which is something. I don't think that's a drone, but, um, I don't know. I think the game's pretty particular about when it says something, the thing that it says is what it means, so. Earth Spirit is okay. Quicksand Conversion is not the play, I don't think. Just straight up not the thing to use. Um, I'm going to shuffle around a little bit, or I'm going to look around a little bit. But we don't have a lot of supporters, I don't think. At least not a lot of ones that would be particularly helpful. Um, I'm not so familiar with supporters is part of the issue. E-cell binder. Um, we do have another option. But yeah. I think Earth Spirit is what we're going to keep using if we're going to keep using a D-Cell Binder, though. Because I'm not seeing any other choices that I think are really <clears throat> what I want to do here. All for various other reasons. Um, Earth Spirit does okay damage, you know. She's not bad. I just uh, definitely wasn't using the right skill for her, I don't think. The standard. Cement is, again, fine. I was reluctant to promote her because of the increased cost, but I don't think she's really that pivotal that we need her to, like, have that much HP that soon. But yeah, the big ugly thing is sort of, like, the, <laughs> the use case for her second skill, considering that it's a big, tough thing that attacks, attacks infrequently but does a lot of damage. So she'd get a lot of use out of her second skill. So. That might be pretty good for Cement. One way or another, though, we definitely need to position Cement and Kaobe in such a way that Kaobe can attack the big ugly thing while Cement is defending. That is for certain. Estella's doing okay. She might do better with Sacrificial Strike to kill enemies faster, but she might not. It's hard to say. I don't think Estesia is really pulling her weight when I deploy her. I don't deploy her often, but I don't think she's re I don't think I'm getting a lot of value out of her. But yeah, she's again another unit that kind of demands to be on the field for a while before she is most effective. Yeah. I think. Okay. So here's sort of what I'm thinking, just to summarize. To say it to you and to myself. So Utage up here, blocking the Braves, is probably going to be good. 
But yeah, having Perfumer on the field will mean that she does get to heal. And the fact that the Braves aren't that common means that she will potentially have the opportunity to take a nap. I think the Braves do stop a little bit on this tile, so that's also good. Enemies will continue to come from here and just sort of keep going like so. So that's where we want to have Estelle roughly somewhere up there. And we'd also want to have Earth Spirit somewhere up there, stopping them or slowing them, I should say. The fact that Earth Spirit means, or the fact that Earth Spirit isn't going to be within enemy like attacking range does mean that we can get away with keeping her outside of uh, healing range. I don't think we're going to see any ranged enemies coming at her, and if they do, it's just going to be the big ugly thing or something. At which point, uh, we kind of don't really need her there anyway. She will have served her purpose and can return home. Um, but yes, beyond that, the big ugly thing is going to come around from the bottom here, make at least one loop, and then go around like so, and pop out here. So, when we get to that point, well, no, I was going to say when we get to that point, we could maybe do a kill box just for the big ugly, but that's not going to work. Because, as we've seen, the big ugly gets into a certain phase at a certain point where it will stop being blockable. And so at that point, it's, you know, there. So we need to, I don't know how long that lasts. So ideally we want to stop it pretty soon. Probably we don't need to deploy cement anywhere near as soon as we usually do. But yeah, Jessica did fine here, shooting enemies there. And I think she will continue to do fine in that role. I could maybe look into another sniper, but I don't know that we have another sniper that's like... Again, without going into the territory of just use a better unit. We could level up Jessica, we could improve her skills, we could do a lot of things. But I think Jessica is about the best option that we have with the tools that are available to us. I mean, again, I'm not seeing much reason to use her. There's probably some, but a lot of the scary units aren't going to care too much about her. Big Ugly could shred her. Yeah, the Braves are going to ignore her while they're being blocked. And most other things are being dealt with well enough. So, it's hard to say when I would want to use Tamimi. The stun's probably good. I'm not going to deny that, but I don't really know how good it is. But yeah, another option that I've never really considered very, like, like strongly. I never really thought too much about using, like, push operators. They're probably not that much worse than guards in terms of defensive capabilities. In fact, yeah. So, F Eater has 240 defense at Elite 1 versus, say, Savage, who, yeah, has 260. Yeah. I'd always assumed for some reason that uh, push... Is it Push Stroker or Push Stoker? Push Stroker. But yes, I had always assumed that they had significantly less defense for some reason. They might have lower health. Uh, yeah, but not like that much lower. Yeah, even Tachanka, who's much, much higher level than her, isn't that much better in terms of stats. So, that's also something to keep in mind is that um, I don't know that I'm planning on incorporating any into my strategy tonight because I'm not that... It'd be a lot of change and I don't know that I'd come up with a good strategy for her just on that. But she would also... She would help to fulfill something of a similar role to what Earth Spirit does by delaying enemies. The enemies here are fairly big, but I don't know that they're that heavy, that she'd be, like, that hard-pressed to push them if we needed to. Because, yeah, a lot of these, yeah, a lot of them are weight one, so. But yeah, the Impalers are 
basically a joke as far as we're concerned. They are not an issue. I've never had, an, well, never had an issue is a strong word, but we've not had a lot of issues with the Impalers. The Warriors are all similarly not an issue. They are only a problem in numbers. The Fanatic is definitely a problem, and we definitely want the Fanatic dead. But yeah, being able to push a Fanatic or otherwise being able to disable them in some way would be quite useful. But we might be able to get by with, again, Estelle just laying down the smack. So yes, Perfumer... Um... Fine Blending is good. Um... I don't know that it's that good. It's good for if you want to apply her passive healing like more strongly. And I don't know that we need that right now. I think her being able to heal relatively quickly is probably better. Gaviol, being able to heal all units would be good, but being able to heal units more, more regularly is also good. I do like the idea of having an emergency option on Gaviol, so I think we'll try that. Anyway, so all of that being said, I'm going to step away real quick and be right back. All right, I have returned. My audio seems a little bit different now, but I think, I don't know. I don't know why it would be. Or er, hold on. Ah, I had my microphone positioned differently. That's why the, that's what the issue was. Because yes, I, I said my audio, but it was just my microphone. So anyway, I did have another thought that we might, another plan that we might implement, another option we might consider. We'll get around to that though, if we, if we do indeed. Anyway, I think this is about the best team that we can, the best team that I can think of right now. Again, there are some other options that I'm weighing, careful, but everyone. I think this is fine. I'm here to help. So yes, Jessica being here is going to be a great boon to us. Yeah, there's probably not a much better place that we could put her. There might be a better place overall, but probably not a substantially better place. And healing wings. So she can heal herself with healing wings as well. I wasn't quite sure of that. Hmm. Again, we can't cover that much. We can't overlap that much if we want to still protect Jessica. And we do want to protect Jessica with all that we have. So I guess it doesn't matter too much where we put Perfumer, but putting her further up will make her less in danger. Yes, so. Before too long, we do want to deploy Earth Spirit. Again, it probably doesn't matter too much. Putting her further away will probably put her out, like, less in danger in her case, actually. I was going to say Jessica's not taking that much damage, but we haven't seen the Ritualists arrive yet, so of course she isn't. Um, actually, this could be good because this will allow her to put some more damage on the brawl or the fanatics so that is that is a thought yeah depending on how effective smokescreen is that might honestly we might find yes. that perfumer's healing isn't as necessary as i had thought it was or at least her being able to heal directly isn't as necessary as I thought it was. Who needs healing? Come over. Okay, so let's... Where did I put... Okay, I was going to say, where did I put Utaga? She's there right where she belongs. So, the enemies are... Worrying. She's not doing as well against the Brave as I had kind of thought. 
But the more her health goes down, the more her DPS goes up, but I don't know that it's going to save her. Um, Oh, hmm. Mm hmm, 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 okay. So I lost track of everything that was going on and now we're uh, in a bad situation. So, I was terrified by the big ugly thing and uh, now I'm deeply troubled. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, Utake did not stand up to that, which is kind of what I was expecting. Uh, hmm. If I use her ability now, it will knock enemies back. Oh dear. Alright, Tomimi. It's time to prove yourself. Oh dear. So yeah. So, Smokescreen didn't do great. Hmm. So yeah, so Smokescreen was not it. <laughs> Smokescreen was not it. Um, yeah, okay. So Smokescreen was not it. I have reiterated that many times. But it continues to be true. So. What other improvements? Um, I could have, I should have kept a better eye on Estelle. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking there, but uh, Estelle paid the price for it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I do wish that I could put Perfumer in a better position, but there's not really a good place that I can put her where she can still support Jessica. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, I've been thinking about putting Jessica down here because I wanted to, like, I pointedly wanted to avoid the anything even resembling the kill box strategy but what if i didn't <laughs> what if i didn't concern myself with such things and i instead put her here where perfumer is right now she could still attack enemies for the same number of tiles in fact she could probably attack enemies a little bit longer potentially making it so a uh, smoke screen would actually be effective on her so yeah, we waited a little bit too long on Utage to confront the uh, Rave. We probably should have just done that right away. I think putting her anywhere in the in the general vicinity of the Big Ugly is a fool's errand anyway. But yeah, top top side, I just wasn't paying attention to the healing on, and so that's just on me. Follow-up work is part of construction too. Just leave it to me to take care of the reinforcement. Cheer up, Daki. Thanks. I appreciate it, Concrete. Samantha. That's her name, Samantha. She was delighted to eat cement when she was four. What was, how's that mean go? Cement, Concrete, four, six. I guess the age doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get down to business, huh? So yes, we also probably should have put Ko Bay anywhere, basically. Um, anywhere and help. sooner than we put her. Um, so yes. So, having thought, we can now revise our strategy a little bit. I should have waited a little bit longer so that I would have Estelle, but it's fine because I have Estelle now. So even when uh, Myrtle can't block, Estelle still can. And because Myrtle can heal herself with healing wings, we don't need to worry too much about all of this. So yeah, so this is actually probably a better place for Jessica. Yeah, again, I was just very pointedly trying to avoid that strategy, that forbidden strategy. Um, and I got a little bit, uh, I got a little bit silly with it, as they say. I'm ready. So yeah, Keobe facing the other way, dealing some damage is good, and will help keep Estelle from being overwhelmed. 
Jessica, again, is in a position where she basically doesn't need to worry about anything ever. Um, I would ideally like Aabe's range to overlap with uh, Earth Spirits a little bit more, but I'm fine with things as they are. <coughs> Yes. So dealing with the fanatics is going to be a little bit easier. <laughs> they don't stop like I was thinking that they did, so maybe the way that we're positioning Earth Spirit isn't necessarily ideal. It would probably be good to have her deploy oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh we've done we've done it just about the worst we possibly could have. Um yeah, we uh, completely did not do the thing that I was planning to do. Oh dear. And I'm realizing now, with uh, we've kind of used up the space that I was planning to use for Utage, huh? Um, so this is a battle. Who needs healing? Come over. So yes, Utage is not going to enjoy her life. Um, Hmm. Maybe it'd be better if she just took a nap sooner rather than later, so that the Big Ugly isn't necessarily guaranteed to immediately destroy her. But she is going to wake up before the Big Ugly can pass her by, so it is going to destroy her nonetheless. Yeah, no, uh... Oh dear, no rest for her. We'll pay for that. Yes. Some violence from Keabe would be appreciated at this time. Oh dear. Oh dear. But we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I don't need to worry too much. Rassant is fine. We can block a little bit of damage on our range units by putting her there. Um, where'd the Brave go? Well, it doesn't matter, it's been destroyed, so, um, we haven't needed to use Sacrificial Strike on Estelle at all, so that's nice. Um, I suppose I never really needed to, but I haven't wanted to. Um, the Big Ugly thing has been distracted somewhat, which is nice. Um... Oh dear. Well, we got a little bit uh, carried away there. Um, if we had not uh, let that stump get eaten and instead put Tomimi on it, that probably would have been kind of good. What did I... Oh, Utage. <laughs> I completely failed to realize that Utage was still here, to be honest. Um, or rather, I forgot that I failed to realize that she had... Uh, she was available again. Okay, Jessica was immediately obliterated. I don't think that was necessarily a matter... Oh, dear. I hope that they fear you. Oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, now we're having issues again. Um, hmm. So, what could we have improved upon? At a certain point, the enemies started piling up. Um, yeah, I don't know. It might... As much as I hate to admit it, it might have actually been like... Like the strategy we were using at first might have been good, actually. <laughs> uh, that's the trick with me, though. Is that when I when I get the get it in my head that something is a bad idea, I never want to do it again. Even when again, the issue isn't that kill box strategies never work. The issue is that they don't work that reliably. So Yeah, one way or another we can't block enough units to make a difference, so this uh, mission is as good as lost. Yes, we had a little bit of an issue with Utage there, but I don't think it's an issue that would have been solved 
by like having her nap at a different time. The Braves weren't <clears throat> as that big of an issue. I guess I wasn't paying that much attention. But yeah. I guess we could still do this in a bit of a way. I don't think anything that I just said there made sense, but to explain a little bit. So, we've got this ranged area here that's a problem, or rather that can be a problem. We want ranged units there. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm having an idea. Okay, 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 okay. So, this area here is where the ranged enemies come from. They go up and around like any other enemy, and they can get destroyed. Jessica is doing good in her position. Of course, having smokescreen, another thing to think of, is a bit of an issue for me. I'm not very good at juggling all the activations, but we can improve upon that. Jessica is doing good where she is. The Big Ugly is going to wipe the floor with her if we give it the chance to, but we don't have to give it the chance to. By not blocking an enemy there, or not blocking enemies here, avoiding doing so, we can help or we can help Jessica out a lot. Because we really don't need to block enemies there necessarily. Instead, we can block enemies here. So, the thought is, we sort of let enemies go here, and we can deal with the melee enemies in here and whatever ranged enemies leak through here as well. Then we have a pretty, you know, a pretty free path for the big ugly thing to circle around. Sit. That's not ideal, but it does give us more options. It gives us time to redeploy units and all that. And if we have our medics positioned smartly, say, Gabiel here, um, Perfumer here, facing like so, we can get a lot of coverage and have overlap without, um, and still be able to like, essentially my idea is to sort of barricade up this area once the big ugly makes its second circle and to deal with everything else up here. Of course, since we're dealing with smaller enemies in other areas, it's probably going to be smart to invest in higher DPS. So how I will go about doing that is something to consider. Of course, another thing to consider is just the idea of having, say, a Dreadnought Defender combo or something to that effect. Say, perhaps Asthesia. Not a Dreadnought, but she only blocks one like a Dreadnought. Again, blocking one specifically because I don't want them to take too much damage. Um, but yeah, a Defender Dreadnought combo, say, Croissant and Anesthesia or someone else over here could be good. Having one unit to take out enemies swiftly and efficiently, another unit to block enemies that they can't kill that fast. But yeah, Earth Spirit still being up there is probably fine. We could position her like so, facing like so to have a little bit more damage here. Of course, that does leave us with a little bit less area for Ko Bay to really shine. Um, we might actually, yeah, have Ko Bay and Jessica here facing downwards. That pretty much completely eliminates even the concept of range units being a problem. And it sets us up for Ko Bay being able to block the big, or being able to damage the big ugly thing. Because again, with her really hot knives active, we saw her doing a lot of damage to the big ugly thing. Amimi could also be good for that. Um, if we can sort of keep these mushroom spaces around long enough to be a thing. The big ugly thing doesn't seem to prioritize destroying mushrooms and stumps. It seems to do that mostly just as a consequence of attacking units that are on those stumps. As opposed to the... Uh, Tikau warriors who had the saws who did seem to prioritize destroying the stumps because yeah I've not seen well okay no 
I never deployed anyone on this tile and the big ugly thing still destroyed it. It's probably at least somewhat dependent on just where it happens to be when it decides to do that, as we saw with Frost Nova. So it's again probably not deterministic, but if, a, if the big ugly thing is staying in a particular position for long enough, then it is probably going to use its ability to destroy the tiles in that area, or it's more likely to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. But yes, the big ugly thing's AoE is strong, but it's not that strong. We learned from fighting uh, Skull Shatterer that just because the enemy has a big bomb attack, it's not necessarily that scary. Especially if it's an enemy that has a, you know, if it's a boss that has a, an AoE attack and then has a single target melee attack, Usually the single target melee attack is the scarier of the two. Even again on an enemy like uh on an enemy like uh Skull Shatterer who is you know in theory supposed to be sort of specializing in explosives though I suppose maybe not to the same degree as say W. Anyway, so that's a lot that was just said and a lot of thoughts that were just had, and I'm going to need to have some time to process them, so let's uh, wrap things up. We don't have enough time to go for another round anyway. Alright, so, thank you for joining me tonight. This has been quite thrilling. And I honestly believe that we are pretty close to having a working strategy here. It is a, again, a triumph of mind over matter, perhaps. Something quite, quite, quite in line with what I was hoping for. It could be made easier by leveling up, certainly, but I definitely don't think that it's strictly necessary, which is sort of what I've been, the point I've trying to been, trying to be, the point that I have been trying to sort of prove to myself, I suppose, in the same way that Eudectes wants to create a world where <clears throat> problems are not solved merely with strength, but with uh, machines, with intelligence, I too want to create strategies that don't just rely on having better units. Of course, again, I'm playing a video game and she's having a philosophical debate uh, with herself and her whole civilization, basically. So, it's a bit of a different circumstance, and I don't necessarily need to take it that seriously, because again, I do have other priorities. But, imagine the personal satisfaction <laughs> with being able to full clear this mission without having to make any drastic changes. Anyway, so... <laughs> If anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. Please, please, please do feel free to offer if you have any whatsoever. In the meantime, I will begin to talk about the, uh, the, the business. Right. Anyway, so, tonight has been Arc Nights. Tonight has been very fun. I've been glad to be here, and I'm glad that you are all here. So yes, next week we should be seeing some more streams, some things will be different and will be, uh, are yet to be determined. Assuming nothing too terribly unusual happens, we will probably be streaming Arc Nights on Wednesday. We will probably be streaming, uh, let me run through things, okay. Assuming nothing changes, and we are currently expecting the Friday stream to change at the very least, but assuming nothing changes. Arc Nights, Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. The Collab with Sheppy Sheps, Friday, 9 p.m. Central Time. And then, probably, if I'm feeling up to it, feeling up to a third stream, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time with Mika and the Witch's Mountain. So yes, once again, the as of right now, Sheps and I are currently deciding upon having, or currently thinking about, doing a uh, different time for the stream, as I understand it, or a different time for the collab, as I understand it. So we might be, might be doing things a little bit differently, but I can't say for certain one way or the other. 
Anyway, all of that being said, I'm not seeing any raid suggestions. So I do believe tonight we are going to go and visit, um... Uh, let's go and visit Svella. Yeah, Svella, who is playing some League of Legends. I remember seeing her play a, uh, sort of, uh, vampire survivors type mode last time I dropped by and saw her playing League, so maybe she's doing that again. Maybe she isn't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm watching an ad right now, I can't tell. But what I can do is I can set up the raid. Flash raid, Svella Prisera. Prisera, there we go. The customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. Ba -ba -ba -bum. And so yes, I believe that is all that needs to be said. Uh, looks like she might be playing normal League, or rather the main game mode of League. Anyway, so thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. Oh, hold on, I forgot to actually send the raid. There we go.